Good evening, Journey Church. Good to be with you this evening. I'm glad that you took time to join us on this beautiful day. And and uh, it was probably a challenge to stay outside or come in, come inside, or you may be outside uh, listening. But we're glad to have you with us and glad you're here. And uh, we will talk about something. Hopefully, it uh, helps you in your Christian walk. But it's called help help for your Christian walk, as you see here on the screen. <clears throat> and four things we're going to look at tonight to help you. And I know. You know, everybody don't struggle, but some people you struggle one place or another, but maybe not in every every area. But hopefully we can cover something here today that will encourage you and give you uh, a time uh, to think about your Christian walk and how you can be uh, encouraged and helped in that walk as, as we go forward. So uh, let's go to, before we do that, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Uh, remember the Sturgill family is uh, uh, Percy Sturgill passed away uh, sometime in the night and just remember that family. There's many others that lost loved ones that need comfort. And uh, for those that need healing, we pray for that, that touch upon their lives. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you, praise you, and bless you, Lord, today. Father, we thank you for the sunshine, for the warm weather, Lord, that you've blessed us with. We thank you, Lord, for this time and this hour that you've blessed us with, Lord, to, to come before you in prayer, to come uh, and study your word. And we thank you for each one that's watching here tonight. And Lord, for a brand new, I pray that you touch their hearts and their lives. And, and Father, I pray, Lord, for those that watch us weekly, that you t continue to bless them and move in their lives. And Father, I pray, Lord, tonight, Lord, again, as for one person that don't know you as Lord and Savior, that you speak to their heart throughout this message. And we ask, Lord, for the Holy Spirit to come, Lord, and, and be in our midst, Lord, and season the word, Lord, as we deliver it tonight. And we thank you for that. We pray for the Sturgill family. Uh, again, Lord, and each one that's lost uh, loved ones, Lord, throughout the past few weeks, Lord, we pray that you just touch and move in their lives, Lord, in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, amen. So we will talk about four things, and the four things we're going to look at are uh, invest, avoid, let go, and move forward. And we're going to explain those just a little bit more in detail, each one of them, as we go through that. So the first thing we're going to look at is invest. And you say, well, man, invest in what? Well, you know, when we talk about investments, we're talking about different things. You know, if, you, if it's money, you're looking out here and investing in uh, stocks or investing in your 401k or different things like that. But we're talking about investing in others. And that's, that's one thing that's going to help strengthen you in your Christian walk because you're going to see people's lives change. You're going to see things take place in their life and they'll be encouraged. So <clears throat> let's look at Luke chapter 16 and verse 9. It says, And I say to you, Make friends for yourselves by unrighteous mammon. An unrighteous mammon is money, but it, by unrighteous mammon. That when you fail, they may receive you into an, an everlasting home. So the scripture can be misunderstood sometimes as Jesus was telling them, uh, like he was telling them, you'll go buy you some friends. But that's not what Jesus was talking about here. He is telling them, though, that you should use money uh, that... God gives you to bring people to Christ. That's what we're using money for. And, and I told them at the church, we were talking about investing in people and different things. And, and, and just like with uh, children and teenagers, if you don't invest money as a church in children and teenagers, then are you investing your money wisely? And I know as older folks, because they generally are the ones that do the tithing and put the most money in, sometimes we get in a situation we think, well, I'm putting all this money in, I'm putting all this tithe in, but all they're doing is trying to take care of kids and teenagers. Well, where would you invest your money? In a greater return or a lesser return? Because so, you think about this, if you invest money as a church in children and in teenagers, then whenever they start coming and they get hooked in with your church or our church, whatever church it is, then in turn, they, their parents will start coming, grandparents will start coming, so you're making an investment. You don't always see an immediate return on your investment. If you invest money in the stock market, again, I like I said, or your 401k, you may not see it initially, but there will be a return on, from God whenever you start investing in people. So uh, they will be uh, then be friends after you've done this and want them to Christ for eternity. And, and if they go on before you, welcome you into heaven. All right? But what better investment could you make than that very thing and making an investment in people? So you may have heard it said, you can't take it with you. You know, a lot of times we, we hoard up money and hoard up money and hoard up money, but you can't take it with you. Or uh, you may have heard it said, I've never seen a bank truck following a hearse uh, or a funeral procession. 
because you can't take it with you that way. But you can send it on ahead of you by making people investments and, and making investments of people who are going to where you're going, to heaven. So let's look at Matthew chapter 6 and verse 19. He says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. What kind of treasures is he talking about? Is it always money? It could be something a little different. So where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Okay, verse uh, 20 and 21 says, But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. All right, so by investing in others, you will be storing up a real treasure for yourself in heaven because when they make it to heaven, what be better treasure could you have in heaven than to know that you've helped win other people to the Lord. You've helped other people make it to heaven. So in the, it, it is the only investment that will still bring dividends even throughout eternity because you you took time to invest in other people. You have took time to invest in them to the point that they're in heaven and they're spending eternity with Jesus. All right, let's go on to the next one. Let's go to avoid. We're going to talk about avoiding spiritual burnout. If you've been in church very long and you work, especially if you're a church worker. Now, if you're a pew sitter, you're probably not too burnt out on church. But if you're somebody that works and you're doing this and you're doing that and something else over here, something else down there, sometimes we have spiritual burnout. But you could, as a, as a pew sitter, you could have spiritual burnout for different reasons. But the only way to truly love people is the way that God loves us, and it, it's with power in our life. Because human love sometimes runs out. We get tired. But the power of God never runs out. It's a, it's a dynamo power, that continuously uh, continuous power, so God's power never runs out. So when we get to the point that nothing seems to be worth the effort, or you find yourself blaming everything on God, you probably are dealing with some spiritual burnout. All right. So just as we take the time to be physically fit, we also need to take the time to be spiritually fit, and to take that into account. Just look at First Timothy chapter four, verse eight. He says, "Physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better." promising benefits in this life and like we said before with the other one with investing in the life to come so we need to avoid that spiritual burnout and and be spiritually fit that we can avoid that it's going to have benefits even in eternity so just as with staying physically fit the, to stay spiritually fit you have to build spiritually refreshing habits into your life you have to do that over and over Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and verse 16. He says, Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, and we can see this, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. So that's exciting to think about, even though you see us getting older and, and our bodies are not what they was when we was 20 or uh, 15 or wherever through there, <clears throat> but the inward man is growing day by day. So we want to do everything we can to build up our physical health, and there's nothing wrong with that. And we do, you know, spend all this money on gyms and all these different kind of things. But our very, at our very best effort, our body is still going to wear out. No matter what happens, it's still going to wear out. But inwardly, inwardly, if I can say that word, inwardly, we can be spiritually renewed every day by spending time with God. All right, our quiet time, and we've studied that uh, on Wednesday nights. Our prayer time, we've studied that. And the spiritual man will live for eternity. So we should keep our spiritual uh, being in spiritually fit. So spending time with other Christians in church or in a Bible study increases your strength. You say, yeah, everybody's trying to get us to come back to church. Now we're still afraid of that COVID stuff. It will strengthen you to be back in church, be with the people of God. Even the Lone Ranger had Tonto, and if you don't know who, if you're too young to remember the Lone Ranger, look it up. But he had Tonto, but Elisha had Elijah, or Elijah had Elisha, and Paul had Silas. So they drew strength from each other. But Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25 says, and if you're very familiar about church, it says, And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of the return of his return is drawing near. Okay? 
you can't encourage somebody that you're not around. It's hard to encourage somebody that's not there. It's hard for you to receive encouragement when you're not there. So we need to be around each other as Christian people to receive and also give encouragement to each other. Okay, so let's look at the next one here. We're going to talk about worshiping and praising God. Well, it's not the next one, but worshiping and praising God will renew your spirit. So uh, Psalm chapter 59 of verse 17 says, To you, O my strength, I will sing praises, for God is my defense and my God of mercy. All right, so you can put on a Christian CD or you've got a iPad or iPhone or whatever. Uh, here in the house, we put, turn on YouTube videos, and you can find any kind of worship video that you're looking for. You can find the Elevation Worship. You can find um, many different ones, like a Hillsong, all the others. You can find Gaither videos, whatever your style of worship is. There, it's available out there, and you can watch the videos. Many of them are in live settings, but you can set that. You can keep that playing in your house all day. Uh, you know, you see people with these earplugs in all the time. You can you can listen to music while you work. Uh, you can uh, for most people, I'll put it that way. But it always strengthens you. Turn the radio on, WCQR. Uh, 88.3 out of Kingsport, or here locally there's a 99.7, also it's K-Love, it has Christian music all day long. So you need to focus on that, put that in your mind, and put in, because whatever you put in is what you're going to get out. So you need to put, be putting good stuff in. But sing along and see how God restores your soul. See how He'll restore you when you start listening and, and singing along with that worship music. Okay, the next thing is let go. We're going to let go of doubt. Any of you doubters? I'm sure we, we all doubt at some point in time. But two things that cause self-doubt, that's doubting yourself in your life, or the first one is comparing yourself with everybody else. You said, now I don't do that. I'm my own person. Well, I bet you do. Because uh, you look at magazines, you look at uh, uh, TV shows and you're comparing yourself well, ladies do a lot with these models men with uh, athletes and all kinds of things so you're comparing yourself but when you do this spiritually speaking you begin to doubt your own abilities and you have abilities God given abilities in doing this we look at everybody else and uh, except for God we're not looking at him and, and that's who we need to be looking at and modeling ourselves after is God but we look at everybody else you think other people are more talented than I am. Uh, you ha they have more abilities. They speak better. They sing better. They preach better. Whatever They're a better musician. Whatever the case is. And we start looking at them. And, but sometimes I've seen people that are very, very talented. And they're very, very good at things. But you can't get any uh, uh, commitment from them to do anything. Because they just lay it aside. But to, when you start to wonder uh, what they think of you instead of what God thinks of you then you're having a problem with doubt. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 12 says, For we dare not class ourselves or compare ourselves with those who commend themselves. So if somebody's always bragging on their self and all that stuff, that's not the person you want to compare yourself with. Now watch athletes. They scored a touchdown or they shot a basket. And are they good? Yeah, they're good at it. But they go thumping themselves on the chest. So look at what I did. Look at what I did. You know, and, and so they're, they're commending themselves, but we can't compare ourselves with them people because we have to ha do our own thing. But they, all, but they measuring themselves by themselves, so they're not measuring themselves against somebody else, but we are measuring ourselves against them. But measuring the, themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. So they're not wise in doing those kind of things. God created you, as we talked about Sunday, as a unique individual. You're out of 7.9 billion people. You're one of a kind. God created you unique. All right? Do not compare yourself to others because God created you for a specific purpose. All right? The second thing is don't focus on your past. Well, in my past, I did this and I did that. You know, I don't know how God can use me. You know, people say this, people say that. How can they do this? Because I know how they lived before. And you can tell them it's because I've been born again. My life has changed. All that old stuff's behind me. I'm moving forward. All right, and Paul talked about it. Uh, and also, but don't let past failures cause you to doubt your future. And I think it was Edison when he created the light bulb. 
he tried about a thousand times to create a light bulb. And somebody said, isn't that you know, kind of dis uh, disheartening to do this a thousand times before you found out the right answer? And he said, no, I, just took it. I learned a thousand ways not to do it. So you have to look at it on a positive side. But people God used in the Bible had to get over their past and push forward to the goal that God had set before them. So you look at the many ones down through time. You look at Moses. You look at Abraham. You look at uh, all the others down through time. You look at Paul again. And you look at Peter, what he did. Peter had to forget his present past when he was preaching on the day of Pentecost. He just, just not long before that, he had denied Christ three times. But then on the day of Pentecost, he preached and 3,000 people got saved. So he, you think about how close his past was. All right, Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13 says, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. This is Paul talking. He said, But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. So Paul could have dwelled on, I killed Christians. I had papers in my hand to go from town to town and bring them in and to kill Christians and, and to st have them stoned to death like he did Stephen. So I had to, that's what I was doing prior to Christ. But when Christ took hold of his life, he allowed Christ to take over. Things changed. That's why he forgot the past because the Bible says, Behold, all things become new. So that past is over with. We need to move forward. And that's what God will do for you. That's what he did for me. All right, the next thing is we need to move forward. Well, how are we going to move forward? We're going to move forward with God's promises. That's where we need to, That's how we need to move forward. All right, if we say to God, I want you to use me. Have you ever made that statement? Uh, what does he promise us? When we, make the, when we say, we're going to step out, God, use me. I want you to use me. As, uh, you know, from now till you take me out of here, I want you to use me to my full ability. Well, here are three things God promised Joshua and they also apply to us today. There's not any promises in the Bible. It's not good for us still today. So God promises strength. Do you need strength to do what God's calling you to do? Sure you do. So let's go to Joshua chapter 1 and verse 5. He said, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I will, uh, was with Moses, so will I be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. So he promised him strength. He made that promise to Moses. He made that promise to Joshua. And he's making that same promise to you and me today. He will go with us. We will have the strength to do what we need to do. And we'll be able to move forward in the Lord. That gives us encouragement to move forward. God, I want you to use me. Okay, I'm going to give you the strength to do what you need to do. All right, what, uh, what he asks us to do, he will give us the power to do. God will not do anything, ask you to do anything that He's not going to equip you to take care of it. God will never ask us to do anything and, and not be with us. He will be with us if we're following His plan. All right, God. Another thing God promises is success. Okay, so look, Joshua chapter one and verse six says, "Be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide an inheritance, the land which I swore to the father to their fathers to give them." So he's telling Joshua right here at this moment, you will be successful in taking the people into and obtaining the land that I promised you. Uh, you'll be successful in it because I'm going to be with you and I'll be right there. You will have success. All right. The next thing is God promises support. He's going to support, support us in what he's called us to do. He's not going to leave us out uh, hanging out to dry. All right. So Joshua chapter 1 and verse 9 says... Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So you think about that. He's going to be there wherever you go. Jesus promised the same thing. In Matthew, at the, in the last chapter of Matthew, he said, I'll go with you all the way to the ends of the world. All right, there are only a few promises of God for his people, or there, these are only a few, excuse me, promises of God for his people. There's thousands of them. One statistic states that there's 33,000 promises in Scripture. However, with many of these being repeated in different Scriptures, if you read Scripture, you'll see a lot of those repeated at different times where God is emphasizing, here's what I'm going to do. Here's a promise I gave to your fathers, I'm giving it to you, and I'm giving it to the next generation. 
So you'll see that many times. But one, one study states that the New Testament alone, there are 250 benefits of promises that are described in the, in the New Testament. All right? So would you like to be wise in life? Would you like to be successful in life? God's promise of success as you move forward is not based on your ability. Okay? It is based on your commitment to His words. If God said do it, you believe God's words, you know it's true, you do it, that's what your success is going to be based on. Not on you. You're not responsible for it. God is because as long as you're doing what God told you to do and you're following His word and you're doing it according to His word, then the success is God. And that's why he says in one scripture, he says, you, uh, some will sow, some will water, but God gives the increase. If we sow, if that's our job sowing, if it's your job to water, God will give the increase. We need to let him uh, do our part, God will do his part. So as we end tonight, let's remember these things, these four things, to help us in our daily Christian walk. We're, here's what we're going to do. We're going to invest in others. We're going to invest time. We're going to invest finances to win people to the kingdom of God. We're going to invest in others. All right, and that's going to be something that we're investing in eternity when we do this. We're going to avoid spiritual burnout. We're going to worship God. We're going to get, listen to praise and worship. We're going to pray. We're going to spend quiet time with God. We're going to be with each other, and we're going to learn from God. All right, we're going to go, and we're not going to doubt. We're going to get rid of doubt. So we need to take care of that. So we're going to let go of it. So we don't, we're not doubting God because we're in His Word. We know what His Word says. We've seen what He's done. And we're not going to doubt God. All right, and the last thing is we're going to move forward in God's promises. He's going to strengthen us. He's going to be with us. He's going to take care of us. And He's going to give us success because we've turned to Him and we're following what He's told us to do. <coughs> Excuse me. We're following His Word. So I want to encourage you in, it to, in that tonight. And as we pray, <coughs> excuse me, let's get in, let's do these very things. And again, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, tonight would be a great night to get a start. And that past can be behind you, and you can start brand new here today. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord, tonight for touching each and every heart and life, for being in, in, with Journey Church here tonight. And I pray, Lord, that you would encourage them through the Spirit, Lord, and through this Word, that they would see that they need to invest in others. And they need to avoid spiritual burnout. And they need to let go of doubt, that they're not doubting all the time. And they need to not compare themselves with other people, <clears throat> Lord, but they need to move forward with your promises and what you've given them and what you've promised them uh, through, uh, through the Word. And, Lord, you've promised it to all of us. And, Father, we want as many, Lord, as could, would come, Lord, to receive you as their Lord and Savior. Lord, we know if we, if we sow in some waters that you'll give the increase. And, Father, we thank you for that. We're trusting you in that. And, Father, I pray, Lord, tonight that you would speak to each heart, Lord, and they would apply these things to their life that they could move forward and it would help them in their Christian walk. And, Father, I pray, I pray that in Jesus' name. Now tonight, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, as I said, we talked about the past, you can put that past behind you. I'm not going to tell you everybody's going to put it behind uh, behind you, but you can. And it's, and it's happened to me, it's happened to Lisa, it's happened to many, uh, millions of others that God has saved them, turned their life around, set them on the right path by following Him. And I, and I promise you, it's not a perfect life, but it's the best life you'll ever live here on earth is giving your heart and life to Jesus Christ. So if you don't know Him tonight, we want to give you an invitation right now if you feel like the Lord is speaking to your heart to pray this prayer with us and ask the Lord Jesus into your heart and become a born-again Christian. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, thank you, thank you for dying for me. For dying for me. Thank you. Thank you. That you are forgiving my sins. That you are forgiving my sins. As I confess them to you. As I confess them to you. I ask you to wash me clean. I ask you to wash me clean. Make me whole. Make me whole. And I will follow you from this day forward. And I will follow you from this day forward. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you don't have a home church, we'd love to have you at Journey Church, Duffield, at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. in person. 
Uh, a lot of the mandates are being uh, being lifted, but we'd love for you to be there, be with us in person. If not, join us live stream about 9.15 on Sunday mornings, and of course each Wednesday night here at 7 o'clock. And we thank you for being with us. Thank you for taking time out of your evening to be with us. And you know, invest in others. Avoid spiritual burnout. Let go of doubt and move forward in God's promises. And have a blessed rest of your week. Thank you.